Hey, what's happening everybody? This is Robert the Leather Cowboy Muhammad right here from me, Leather Crafters. And this is a part two continuation of another video I did earlier about alcohol-based dyes versus water-based dyes versus oil-based dyes. So, and I said and that video kind of ran a little long because there was so much that I wanted to share about the different dyes techniques and things like that. But as promised, and I said, if you guys come on back, I was going to tell you about a very hot new project that's popping off right now in the leather crafting world that can generate you and make you a lot of money boys and girls i'm telling you this can make you a lot of money it is a guaranteed money maker uh a few of you if you're on my social media outlet pages facebook ig twitter Insta, uh, instagram and ig is the same thing uh all of them because i'm on all of them uh instagram facebook ig twitter uh, IG, I just said that again. IG and Instagram is the same thing. So let's start that all over again. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Swarm, Tumblr, Flickr. If, if you're not on all seven social media outlets, you need to be. If you're trying to be a craftsman in this business, and using it as a for-profit business to feed your family and take care of your business and take you to heights and levels that um, you should be on as an entrepreneur. You need to be on all social media outlets, all of them. Facebook being the biggest one of them all, even after they took a hit, they only went from 4.7 billion, no, 4.9 billion to 4.2 billion. There's still a lot of billions of people out there that's still interactive on Facebook. And the funny thing about that, even though some of the people stop subscribing to Facebook because somebody said that they did, uh, somebody said that Facebook was for whatever. I don't get off into politics. I physically trained myself to not get involved in that because politics and religion can hurt your business if you are an entrepreneur. Trust and believe that. Stuff like that needs to be personal. Keep it personal, keep it out your business, and it won't affect your money. Trust what the cowboy is telling you. But anywho, um, it didn't affect ad sales or advertisement, none. So even though some people dropped off, they still are tuning in to uh, getting ads and subscriptions and following along with uh, uh, promotions and markets and things like that. But anyway... Um, if you guys have all logged in on my social media outlets, then you already know because I posted pictures that I was so happy uh, about this little jewel that I found. And I'm going to give you a quick insert real quick with three minute mark already. Um, uh, in my city, my city starts the world's longest yard sale. Uh, Gaston, Alabama, I think it started maybe like 20 years ago. And it's like 1,100 miles of, uh, no. Told your story. It's seven, seven or eight hundred miles of people just yard selling, uh, and, and it's actually two. Uh, one starts in my city, which is the first one. Uh, it's the longest yard sale, and then there is another one that's right uh, the weekend before Mother's Day, and it's the second uh, longest yard sale that runs through my city, but it starts two cities down. So, you know, just like everything else in life, you know, you start something and then somebody else see how successful that is and then they want to start something too. Hey, you know, that's the nature of the beast. So even with, and, and that's why I share these um, uh, videos and I share these tips and this advice and I share these techniques and different things like that because one, I understand as a business person, I can't make all the money. I mean, and besides, you think Walmart is pissed off and upset because Dollar General moved around the corner? No. And, and I'm not comparing myself to Walmart or the people who are watching this video as Dollar General. I'm just saying that it's enough money into this business that everybody can eat. You know, I don't have to eat T-bone steak every night in order for me to say I have uh, uh, a ride, or uh, I have to, I don't have to eat beef Wellington, you know, uh, in order for me to say I ride. You know, I'm a country boy, cube steak and gravy, and some rice and biscuits. Man, especially if you know how to make some good old cat head biscuits. Hey, 
I'm eating steak. It don't matter if it's cube steak or if it's a beef wellington. You know, it don't make a difference to me. But I understand that there's enough money in this business for everybody to eat. And that's my thing. That's why I share these videos more than anything else. Not that somebody can take my customers or my clients because we all can get knocked. You know, uh, and when I was coming up in the street, we used to call that knocking, knocking your hustle. You know, when somebody move in on your area. Oh, man, I get petty like that. And I'm a grown man now. But it's enough money out here for all of us to eat. So with that being said, uh, my daughter, my oldest daughter, <laughs> which is the funniest thing in the world. Uh, she said, Daddy, I want to go yard selling. And I'm like, what? You know, you you. Why did you pick the hottest part of the day to go yard selling? And I'm like, where are we going to go yard selling at? And I completely forgot about this longest mile yard sale because, or this longest, worst longest yard sale, because there have been times yesterday years ago that I actually worked that yard sale doing leather work because it's people from all over the world that comes to this thing. And it's the most frustrating thing for my city at that time of year. Uh, it's the weekend right before school starts back in August. Uh, so if you ever want to come drive over, travel over, or whatever, you will find stuff that you will only see on American Pickers. Uh, and it's for not. And I'm, I'm going to show you this piece because this piece right now is very hot in the leather world right now. Uh, there's a gentleman that's in Kansas, the Kansas Leather Guild, Wichita Leather Guild. So I'll make sure I want to give the credit to this brother. And I can't read his name. It escapes me right now. But he is given a class in the Kansas area. So if you're around this Kansas area, or you can log on to the Wichita Leathers Guild on Facebook, and you can see the announcement of the post to where he's teaching a class on this hot new item right now in the leather world. And uh, he's teaching the techniques and things that he does because I'm telling you, family, this is so hot right now. It's a, it's a good money maker if you got the time and uh, to sit down and do it. One piece can generate you a week's worth of salary. And depending on where you are, I don't know how much you make uh, on your job or retired or whatever, but I've seen this particular project go for five hundred dollars or better. Swear to God, swear to God, it's so it it grabbed my attention so much on the money because I'm hungry like that, and and, and, and I'm not gonna let no hustle get past me, you know. And in my mind, I feel if you want it in leather, I can do it anyway. That's how I built my business, so it doesn't matter what. A customer comes to me and asks me if he wanted in leather, it, it can be made, you know, and that's just my mentality. But, um, and I'm going to tell you the difference between my product that I found on this yard sale. So my daughter wants to go to this yard sale. So anyway, we strike out, gas up the car, and we start riding. And at the time, I said, well, hey, look, what we're going to look for, I said, I was physically looking for another particular project that I'm interested in doing. And that's what we was looking for small end tables or small lamp tables. Because uh, my thoughts was, uh, I'm going to buy about five, six, about, about, honestly, I was going to buy about three to five of them. Because I figured at yard sale, I could probably get a steal for about five, ten bucks. So I took about sixty dollars with me, and that's what I was going to buy was these little small wood end tables that I can cover up and use them for leather artwork. And I was going to sell those, uh, and that was my plan because I have seen a lot of stuff like that that's taking place overseas. Uh, around Germany. Uh, I've, I've seen this one lady. I, I don't know exactly where she lives over there, but it's somewhere in between that Germany, Denmark area. But uh, she she takes these tables and she'll do the top and in leather. And she sells that. So it's a completely in non-functioning table. I mean, it's just going to stand there and people look at the artwork that she's done on it. But she's making a killing in that game right there. So, um, and, and I haven't 
seen the prices. I haven't even asked the prices that she was charging for that. But if it was me and my work, oh, I'm going to hit you in the head for around six, seven hundos. You know, I, I, I got to because it's a piece of art. And that's what the market that I was going in. So I told my daughters, look, okay, look, um, you guys need a computer desk in y'all room. I bought them a little laptop, her and her sister, to where they can be in their room and doing their little uh, little girl stuff on social media. Cause I, I allow them to have a little social media platform, but I keep it checked anyway. So I said, okay, y'all look for a little computer desk, and y'all look on that side. I'm going to look on this side of the road because you got houses that's out selling stuff all the way up for hundreds of miles. So we drove about 14 miles out, no, we drove about 18 miles outside of the city in a part of town that I've never been to before and I live here all my life. So this little antique store in a little community called Black Creek, Alabama. Uh, uh, man, little small place, but the sign it said um, six day antique. No, it said antique six day clocks. And I was like, huh? Ow. What's a six day clock? You know, time is every day, all day, every year. But I was like, I got to see what this six day clock is. So I whips up in this antique place, you know, and this guy, he has all type of, of foot tubs out there and these old timey plows and uh, old timey gen one um, cotton gin machine. I mean, it's all types of stuff that's out here. These little antique figurines. I mean, man, uh, um, it's all types of stuff. He had dolls that had corn silk hair where I guess back in the whatever hundreds of years ago that was, the hair that they used in dolls was made out of corn silk. So, I mean, I just, but that is me. Anyway, running off a little bit. 12 minute mark. Stay focused, cowboy. But I go in there and I ask the question, what is a six day clock? Now, I'm going to angle my camera down a little bit because I want you guys to see this. This is what's popping right now in the leather crafting world. These particular, some people call them mantle clocks. But the proper name for them, I must, now with the educational lesson that I got last Saturday from this antique store in Black Creek, Alabama, the, the lesson that, that I got from this was these were called six-day clocks because back in the day, they only ran for six days when you uh, wound them up. And you have to wound these, uh, wind these up. And it comes with a little key, this particular key here. And you would open the clock and it has a little face thing, a little lip to where you can open these. Good God, man. I don't want to tear it up because this clock was super expensive. Let me get to this thing. All right. So, you have these six day clocks. So, you'll open the face up and you'll stick this key in, and you can only turn the key, whatever you did to the hour hand you done to the minute hand as well. And so if you did a quarter turn here, you come over here and do a quarter turn over there. And you'll close the clock back. And it'll stay running for six days, six day clock. But, and then you can tell around the back. Now back in those days, uh, clock makers were pretty wealthy people. And you can see the, the, the antiqueness in this. And I haven't even cleaned this up yet. Still got a little cobwebs in here. But this is the chimer here. And this is the little hammer. I don't know if you guys can hear that. But you push that. Well, as it. There it goes. And it makes that little sound right there. Now, and this was is not the most expensive one. 
The ones that was a little bit more expensive than this had multiple chimers or multiple of these little metal rods and the, the little hammer will hit each one and you'll get a different chime. Boom, 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 or whatever. This one is just one chime. And it runs by the pendulum. This is a little thing right here because it didn't have a second hand. Let me adjust that some more. This is called a pendulum. And that kept your seconds. And it just rocked back and forth once you wound it up. So, but anyway. Got my valuable little lesson on a six-day clock. But these are hot right now in the leather world. Now, a lot of them that you'll be seeing in these different leather guilds or leather shops or people who are giving these leather classes, I specifically look now for the, the winding holes. And... If they don't have the winding holes, those are newer, modern clocks, probably running by a battery. And, uh, but it's not a six day clock because they'll continue to run. So, and they're, they are a lot more cheaper. They just have that antique look. Cool. Fine. Not a problem with that. No beef at all with that period. But what I paid for this clock, what I paid for this clock, this is considered antique. So now, are there some people out there that would like to just purchase this clock on its own? Yes, there are. Uh, but I'm going to do to this six day clock because it has that key and people who collect clocks or, or know about clocks and things like this, they know what this particular clock is just by seeing the two winding holes. And when they see the key, it comes with its own particular key. But this particular antique store that had these, let me move my clock back up. This particular antique store that had these had a wall full of them. Yes, my new gold mine. And i like to give a shout out to my daughter because if it hadn't been for my oldest daughter saying, hey, daddy, I want to go yard selling, I wouldn't have never found this little jewel in that particular part of my city or my, well, it's inside the county limits. It's not inside the city limits, but I never would have found that place because I never would have went up that road that far out ever because I had no need to do it. But uh, these are now being wrapped and tooled in leather. Uh, you can look on Pinterest. You'll see how different people are taking this these particular clocks and they're wrapping them in leather and they're reselling them for great dollar amount returns. And they are very beautiful, very beautiful work. The one thing that I would say that uh, I'm going to do to this particular piece is because it is a true antique six-day clock. Um... Is I'm going to do the same thing, and I think that increases my value a little bit on that. So with that, let me get out of this because now let me get up into the purpose of this video. Anyway, shout out to Gene. Uh, Gene is one of the subscribers uh, on to the YouTube channel, and Gene had just messaged and said, and you guys can read that in the comment. Uh, on the uh, herringbone pattern video, uh, Gene just went out and bought this particular tool here, the X503. Beautiful tool. It does beautiful things. Uh, I call it a basket weaving stamp. I, I think it's in the line of basket weaving because the way that you utilize this tool, it does mimic a basket weave. Instead of it being the straight basket weave uh, as with the X534, as it being this, it's still in the same family. It's just a different type of tool to give a different type of look. Now, Gene, if you're watching this video, sir, you did it even though you did a great job. If uh, I guess let me give you uh, a, a golden a golden nugget because the X five hundred three has two younger brothers. 
I have the middle brother, and this is the X502. Now, anytime that you're buying uh, any of the X series tools, they, especially with Tandy, they generally have a small, smaller version or a larger version. Even with the camo tool, the camouflaging tools, you will see a, uh, yes, even with the camouflaging tool, and this is the D, oh God, y'all know I can't see without these, I'm getting too old. So this is the, the C453, and its smaller sibling is the C709, and that's the camouflaging tool, and they are to the same tool, just a bigger and a smaller version of each other. Now, and the reason why I say that, even with the um, any of the X tools, uh, especially in the bas that basket weaving line for tools that are known to basket weave, buy all three versions, or buy the bigger brother and the medium brother, or buy the medium brother and the smallest brother, because you can utilize those two tools or all three tools together on a piece. And so like, even with the X503, the X503, uh, the biggest one, and this is the middle the middle brother, is three of these. There's one smaller than the 502, which um, in my handy dandy tandy catalog, the, that particular tool, uh, and I'm golly, and I should have did this faster, sooner, earlier, uh, so you guys can know that basket weaving line. Okay, the um, there is a X286 that is out there and has a dual insignia, the infinity insignia in between it. Uh, but any of those X tools, uh, they have a bigger and a smaller version uh, to themselves. Even with your veiners, your veiners, your mule foot, you'll see those utilized in a lot of the Sheridan design. Uh, you'll see the mule foot uh, that's used in the scroll of your Sheridan design, and you'll see them getting smaller or you'll see them getting bigger because they invested and got all of the tools. There's a bigger version and a smaller version. Uh, your camouflaging tools are the same. Uh, everything except your geometric tools, your, your backgrounding tools, they are a bigger and a smaller. It's the three tools for every version except that I know, except your geometric stamps, and they all just have that one particular size. But that particular tool is a great tool to have, uh, is to get all three or two. The two larger ones, the middle and the larger, or the middle and the smaller. But you can utilize those two together, and that will just expand or make your work that much more beautiful. So, Gene, this is for you, my friend. I'm going to give a quick uh, uh, tutorial on the X503 and I'm going to incorporate the X502 with that and just do a short piece to give you an idea uh, and just and Gene I'm not saying Gene I'm not saying Gene I'm not saying that you couldn't have figured this out but that inspired me to get back out and do more videos so I took a quick break from uh, from doing the uh, the call hosters, the, the the hosters for the for the hunting company, uh, to do that video because I was excited, and I was excited one that you watched the videos, Gene. I was excited two that you went out to one of my favorite uh, leather stores and invested your money into your tools and bought that X five hundred three. And I was ex super excited that you decided to share that with the Leather Cowboy. And man, you just don't know, bro, that right here, that's a lot of love. 
I mean, and that's something that you didn't have to. And there's people out there that's buying tools all over the world and they don't share that with me. I mean, I don't know when they're buying tools and when they're not buying tools. But thank you, Gene. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And man, if there's anything that I can do uh, as far as give, just sharing with you what I know, you got it, my friend. You got it. And you can hit me up on any social media outlet that you uh, want to, or you can hit me up right back here on the YouTube page. So let me slide over, grab a scrap piece of leather, get these lights adjusted, and we're going to get off into this X503 and the X502. So you guys hold on. Here we go, and we're back. As you guys can tell, Jeopardy is one of my favorite TV shows. I love that show. Any show that's out to give you a little bit of education and knowledge, you can't be mad at that. Love Jeopardy and Alex Trebek. Big shout out to Alex. Okay. I thought I was done, but I'm not. My fault, people. I'm trying to find a good scrap piece that I don't mind wasting. Um, because I have so much stuff in here. Okay. Let's utilize this one. And this is so old right here. This particular piece just didn't do like I wanted it to. Cause I wanted to case it and I wanted well I wanted to talk to you guys while I was casing it or while it was casing but we're gonna have to rush through this because we're already at the 27 minute mark uh, so if you guys remember how to case and you can tell how that's going to case and form um, but now the X503 so what we're gonna do here uh, just doing a quick tutorial. I'm going to run my wing divider out so we'll know exactly what we're doing. What we're doing. And I'm just going to give two pretend borders right there. If you guys can see those borders. And what I'm going to do is, now, with this particular piece, no, that's not going to work because you're going to have to do a secondary step with using that tool, Gene, my friend. So let me just go ahead and get all the way right, Gene. So I'm going to go ahead and get all the way right. This is for my friend Gene. So Gene, what we're going to do, uh, we're going to do a border edge on this particular piece. So I'm taking my wing divider. And just to give you an insight on how to utilize this or what I have used it for. So we're just going to hypothetically say this is a belt. And I'm just going to put a good line on this. All right. Now, the thing with this particular tool here is just like a regular basket weave, you have to make sure that everything is going to line up. So, outside of my um, two border lines, I'm going to measure this, which is a full inch and a half. So, I'm going to go 0.75. To get my center line. And then I'm going to take that and draw me. I don't want to etch me a line. I just want to draw me a light line with my pencil. Down the middle. And this will be on any particular piece. So if you're working on a holster or whatever have you. You want to make sure that you do that. Let me get right over this with the light so you guys can see. 
and make sure that everything is going to come out right. And I'm going to start this off with my, now the way I use mine, Jen, you can use, or anyone who's watching this, you can even use the center of this part here, or you can use in between the two lines here, the indented part in between here. So it's really whichever piece, uh, whichever one that you want to work. If you want to work the indented part there, or if you want to work half of this one. I like using half uh, and lining it up on the back side too. And now what I what what will work best for you, Gene? I don't know if you guys can see the back side of this, but I took a nail, just a regular 16 penny, or you can use an eight penny nail or whatever. You can probably even use a scratch owl. And I scratched me a mark at the indented part here, and I also scratched the mark on the other side. So when I use when I use this tool, Gene. Um, I line up that scratch mark with my line and then the back part we're here so I know that this particular part is straight. And then um, we commence to driving the line. Now, with this tool, you, you want to walk it. And you can do, you want to make sure that your impressions are very deep and clean. And then you're just going to make that up with the next one. And you just keep walking that tool up. I'm gonna make sure that your, your lines are very clean and crisp. So you get this particular pattern or shape here. Now, you just go right into the side of that you just match up the tool with your impressions. And you just keep working that all the way around. And you make sure that you want to be very tight with your impressions so you don't have that. That's And I did that on purpose so you can see that you want to make it very tight. You want to take your time and make sure that your tool is lined up perfectly because that will show in your work. You want to make sure that everything matches up perfect because this is the key and the secret to basket weaving is the perception that this line here is going or this weave is going under that tool and going to come out on this side. So, and when you get ready to do your other side, you want to, again, make sure that everything is lined up tight and on point and like it's supposed to go so your tool doesn't walk off its pattern. Now, as well as, uh, as and it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter who you are, boys and girls. And if you're not on top of your game, you can have that happen. 